Hey, welcome back to The Garage and part three of the CNC start to finish series. Uh, if you haven't seen the first couple parts of this, the, in, the intention is I wanted to take you through a full end-to-end uh, -end process of designing a part in Fusion 360, generating the cam tool paths, and then uh, part three here is actually cutting it out on the uh, CNC router table. Uh, so the part, of course, is, uh, if you've seen the earlier uh, parts of the series, is just a simple uh, hold-down clamp. And the reason I chose this as a good example, um, it's, it's fairly simple, but it does have the challenge of we have, um, we have to do two operations. We have parts uh, that need to be machined from, or features on this that need to be machined from both sides. Uh, so that involves reorienting the part, which gives it a little extra challenge. So hopefully uh, you find this useful. So uh, let's get started by loading it up in the uh, computer into the into Mach 3. Uh, important first step, whenever you turn on the machine, it's always good to re-reference the home. What that means is it, it doesn't actually have, you know, the, the machine doesn't know exactly where it is at any one point. The only time it knows where it is is when it hits the limit switches on the end of the gantry travel. So in order to make sure everything's zeroed out, it's important to do this ref all home. And when we click this, you'll see that it's, uh, it'll move the Z axis to zero it out and the same thing for the X, or for, then the Y and then the X. So it knows that everything is at zero, zero, zero. And if we switch this to machine coordinates, you can see that it, once it hits the, uh, limit switch here, everything is zeroed out. So it knows that that's home because what it knows, since the, it's driven by stepper motors, it knows how far it's gone, but when you turn it on, it doesn't necessarily know where it is. So now as we move it, you can see the machine coordinates moving. It knows right where it's at. All right, the next thing we need to do is actually load the G code into Mach 3. So if we go to the load G code button, and you can see that I have three .tap files, which is the format the Mach 3 uses. Now, if you're using something other than Mach 3, this uh, process will be slightly different. But the first thing we're gonna do is this bottom, which cuts out that notch on the bottom of the clamp. So we're just gonna load that up. So we have our piece of three quarter inch birch plywood that we're gonna cut this out of. Uh, now, it's two important things. Uh, we know that we're going to reference off of this corner first, then when we flip it over, that corner will be on the other side. Uh, but we need more than just knowing exactly where the corner is. When we flip it, we need to make sure that it doesn't change, uh, change angle at all. Uh, we want to make sure it's perfectly flat, uh, perfectly uh, uh, square to the table. Now, what you could do is you could measure from the end of the table. Uh, to make sure that you keep it uh, square when you flip it over. But what I've done is I've actually run a CNC program to drill a few quarter inch holes into my table uh, into the, the spoil board. And what that allows me to do is to insert some uh, dowel pens into those. And I know that these are square to the router. So I know now when I do this, it's, gonna, uh, it's going to be square. So let's line this up where we want and we're gonna use some clamps. I'm just gonna put one on each side that should keep it nice and sturdy. And they don't need to be horribly tight. It'll, it'll stay in there pretty solidly. Uh, and of course, I wanna pull my dowel pins out. Once it's lined up, these aren't needed and I wanna make sure the router bit doesn't hit them. So at this point, we know, you know, the. The machine knows where zero is on the machine coordinates, but it doesn't know where the piece is that we're cutting out of. And we want to reference off of this corner. Uh, now, the way I do it, and this is an extra add-on that I bought with the table, is from CNC router parts, I have this touch plate that sits on the corner and can be used to zero it out, which is a nice, very quick and simple way of zeroing things out highly recommended a wireless keyboard uh, so that I don't have to be standing at the CNC machine so that we can move this around. So I'm just going to get it get it close, get it over the touch plate. And for moving this, all I'm doing is the arrow keys move it around, just the normal arrow keys, and then the page up and page down are used to uh, raise and lower the z-axis. So do page down to get a little closer. And the way this works, it's an electrical uh, contact between the router bit and the plate. 
and uh, so it just has a magnet that we can clip on to the collet of the router. So now when it touches, it knows that things are zeroed out. So let's go back to Mach 3. So we click the auto tool zero and it'll pull up this dialog uh, that lets us set up what we want to zero. Now by default, it's going to just do the Z axis. That's just the height of the router bit. Uh, but what we care about is also the X and Y. So I'm going to click those. Uh, also remember how we need to do two operations. Normally it's going to, the left front is typically where you zero out the tool. Uh, but on this one, since we need to do some on the back and some on the front, on the back, we set it up in Mach 3 with the origin being the lower right-hand corner or the right front. So I'm going to check that. Also, you need to make sure you set the diameter of the tool. Since it's checking the edges of this and is trying to center the tool, it needs to know how big the tool is. Uh, this is a quarter-inch router bit, so we'll do 0.25 and make sure we're in inches. Uh, I'm going to unclick this box. Uh, that just pauses it after it does each axis so that you can turn the router bit appropriately so the flutes will touch the edge. On a spiral bit, it really doesn't make uh, any noticeable difference. And we can click OK, and we can see that it slowly lowers it down, touches off the Z-axis, lifts up a little bit, and it'll do the X and then the Y. And now we can take this off, and we know that we are centered directly above that corner. Now, there's one uh, slight issue with that. Actually, I need to leave this up here. We had set the work coordinate where the origin was at the table. Right now, it's zeroed where that is on the top of this corner. I prefer to zero things on the table. So we need to do one more zeroing operation. Uh, this has two sides, one that's made to uh, sit over the lip of a corner, the other that's made to set flat on a table like this. And we'll... Uh, center the tool roughly over this again and now this time i'm just going to set the z-axis i'm not going to change the x and y because we want that to be set right where it was on uh on the corner of that uh, piece of plywood but now i'm going to zero the z-axis again and now that origin will be right at the bottom corner of that piece of plywood which is how we set it up in fusion 360. and of course as I mentioned in my intro to CNC, where I talked about setting up the table, dust collection is critical. This creates a lot of dust. So I'm going to put my dust brush on it and we'll run the dust collection. But at, so you won't be able to see exactly what's going on. Actually, you know what? I like you. I'm gonna make a mess, but just so we can see what's going on a little bit better, I'm gonna leave this off and I'll just clean up later. So we're ready to start cutting. Uh, now the G code that comes out of Fusion 360, it's, uh, it does, this is something that confused me the first time I ran it. It starts out and then it pauses. If I click cycle start now, it raises to the, uh, the Z axis all the way to the top and then stops. What I realize it's doing is it's putting this operation in, asking, giving me the opportunity to change tools. I don't care about changing tools. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, what I can do is I can just click cycle start now. Uh, so let me go ahead and turn the router on. Alright, you can see it's milled away the uh, underside of what's going to be our clamp, so now we can unclamp this, flip it over, and do the other side. And I'll flip it over. I'm going to use the dowel pins again that will ensure that we're lined up so we're, we're square on both sides, so when we flipped it, this corner is now this corner, and we know we're square with the table again. Make 
sure you remove the dowel pins. Okay, we need to make sure we close that G code and we're gonna now load the first one for the second operation, uh, which is this slot dot tap, which is gonna cut that slot and the uh, countersink. And now we zero it again, uh, just like we did before. The only difference is we're gonna leave this as left front, which is typically where you're gonna zero things out. We make sure our tool diameter is set correctly and check this and we can zero it out. And once again, we have zeroed it with the Z axis being the top of the table. And I want the Z axis to be the bottom of the table. So I'm gonna reposition this, get it close. And we will re-zero again but this time we're just gonna leave it as just the Z-axis. All right. So now we can cut that slot. Now I could have done this as a, both this part and the cutout as the same G code file. Uh, but if you remember from part two of this video series, when I talked about uh, generating the G code, I always like to do these as individual files on a simple part like this really doesn't make any difference. Uh, but if it's a more complex part, it's nice to have those as separate part, uh, separate files, just in case you do need to restart the uh, program in the middle. Uh, for example, if uh, it was it had just started the cutout portion of it and the router bit broke, you could stop it, replace the router bit, and then you could just rerun just that part. It's finding, you can restart a G-code program from in the middle, but it's difficult to figure out exactly where. Uh, by doing this, I can just rerun that G-code file and uh, allows me to restart without wasting the rest of the part. So let's go ahead and do the final cutout. For this one, I am going to use my uh, dust collection to make a little less of a mess. And since nothing's changed, we don't need to re-zero anything. So we should be able to just uh, start it up. So I'm going to start the router, start my dust collection, and we'll do the cutout. Hearing protection is very useful for this. 
So you can see that the part's still held in by the tabs, uh, which kept it from coming loose, but that's pretty easy to cut out. Uh, a utility knife works fairly well. I find that this pole saw works perfectly. And then when two of them are out, you can simply bend it over and snap those off. And we can clean this off. I can sand that down. But now you can see that things lined up properly. We have the notch. Now granted, this didn't need to be extremely precise for that to line up, but you can see how by the reorientation it all came out properly. And we have uh, our finished piece. So hopefully you found this useful. Uh, it's a you know fairly basic part, but shows the basic techniques of what you need to do to design and cut out a part on a CNC router. So hopefully uh, that's useful for you and you can get out and make something interesting.